Hey everybody, it's Grandpa again. Got another story for you. Uh, this one is The Book of Giant Stories by David L. Harrison. It's not the giant book of giant stories, just giant stories. Okay. The Book of Giant Stories. First, there's a little poem here. Let's see if we can get a little closer. It says, A careless giant once on top... A careless giant once sat on top of a very small gnat. The gnat looked around and said with a frown, That giant has ruined my hat! Hmm. Let's see. His hat. Hat. The giant sitting on the hat. Okay, first story, The Little Boy's Secret. One day, a little boy left school early because he had a secret to tell his mother. He was in a hurry to get home, so he took a shortcut through some woods where three terrible giants lived. He hadn't gone very far before he met one of them standing in the path. When the giant saw the little boy, he put his hands on his hips and he roared, What are you doing here, boy? Don't you know whose woods these are? I'm on my way home, answered the little boy. I have a secret to tell my mother. That made the giant furious. Secret? he bellowed. What secret? I can't tell you, said the little boy, or it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Then I'm taking you to our castle, said the giant. Stooping down, he picked up the little boy and plopped him into his shirt pocket. Before long, the first giant met a second giant who was twice as big, three times as ugly, and four times as mean. "'What's that in your pocket?' he asked the first giant. "'A boy,' he answered. "'Says he's got a secret he won't tell us.' When the second giant heard this, he laughed a wicked laugh. "'Won't tell us, huh?' he chuckled. Well, we'll just see about that then. To the castle with him. The giants thumped on down the path. In a short time, they came to a huge stone castle beside a muddy river. At the door, they met the third giant, who was five times bigger, six times uglier, and seven times meaner than the second giant. What's that in your pocket? he asked the first giant. A boy, he answered. A boy, chuckled the third giant. He brought his huge eye close to the pocket and peered in. Says he has a secret he won't tell us, said the first giant. When the third giant heard that, he laughed a terrible laugh. Won't tell us, eh? he asked. Well, we'll just see about that. On the table with him. See, there's the boy in the pocket, there's the littlest giant, and there's the medium giant, and there's the big giant. And that must be their castle. Hmm. The first giant took the little boy from his pocket and set him on the kitchen table. Then all three giants clustered around and peered at him. The little boy looked at the first giant. He looked at the second giant. He looked at the third giant. They were truly enormous and quite mean-looking. Well, said the first giant. We're waiting, said the second giant. I'll count to three, said the third giant. One, two. The little boy sighed a big sigh. Oh, all right, said the little boy. I suppose I can tell you, but if I do, you must promise to let me go. We promise, answered the three giants, but they all winked sly winks to one another and crossed their fingers behind their backs because they didn't really mean to let him go at all. The little boy turned to the first giant. Bend down, he said. When the giant leaned down, the little boy whispered into his ear, 
When the giant heard the secret, he leaped up from the table. His knees shook, his tongue hung out. Oh, no, he shouted. That's terrible. And he dashed from the castle, ran deep into the woods, and climbed to the top of a tall tree. He didn't come down for three days. The second giant scowled at the little boy. What's wrong with him? he asked. Never mind, said the little boy. Just bend down. When that giant leaned down, the little boy stood on tiptoe and whispered into his ear. When the second giant heard the secret, he leaped up so fast that he knocked his chair over. His eyes rolled, his ears twitched. How awful, he roared. And he raced from the castle, ran over a hill, and crawled into the deepest, darkest cave he could find. The third giant scowled fiercely at the little boy. What's wrong with them, he asked. Never mind, said the little boy. Just bend down. When the giant leaned down, the little boy climbed onto a teacup and whispered into his ear. When the giant heard the secret, he jumped up so fast that he ripped the seat of his trousers. His teeth chattered. His hair stood up. Help, he cried. Help. And he dashed from the castle and dived head first into the muddy river. The castle door had been left open, and since the giants had promised the little boy that he could go, he walked on home. He told his mother his secret, but she didn't yell and run away. She put him to bed and fed him some supper. The next morning, when the little boy woke up, he was covered from head to toe with bright red spots. Now I can tell everybody what my secret was, he said with a smile. My secret was, I'm getting the measles. Oh, no. Can you see? He's got bright red spots all over him. Oh, my. Well, the measles are no fun, but that's better than being caught by three giants, I guess. Okay. George, the unusual giant, never was cross or defiant. And oddest of all, George was small. He was just a peanut of a giant. Well, I don't think he's much of a giant then. <sighs> the giant who was afraid of butterflies. There used to be a cranky witch who lived at the top of a hill in a creaky old house with eleven black cats and any number of spiders and bats. In the valley below lived a huge giant whose thundering footsteps shook the ground when he walked around. The witch despised the giant because every time he went walking, the ground shook so much that bats kept tumbling from her ceiling and plopping into her lap or her soup. And it would be bat soup. Sometimes the witch became so angry that she would leap onto her broom and streak down over the valley to scold the giant. But to the huge giant, the witch looked no bigger than a pesky mosquito buzzing around his head. He never paid much attention to her, and that made her angrier still. Finally, the witch decided to cast an evil spell on the giant. Far into the night, she stirred her bubbling pot and added witchy things like poison ivy and pig's toes and thistles. She muttered and cackled and screeched until at last the spell was ready. Then she rolled her eyes and croaked, Boyoon, bubble witches brew, I'll fix that giant when I'm through. When I've cast my evil spell, tomorrow he won't see so well. My spell will pay tricks on his eyes to make things look two times his size. The next morning, the giant opened his eyes and looked to see what sort of a day it was. The first thing he saw was a squirrel scampering down a tree. Because of the witch's evil spell, the squirrel looked two times bigger than the giant. With a frightened roar, he leaped backward and knocked down three trees. A bird landed on the grass to hunt worms. To the bewitched giant, the bird looked twice his size. This time he fell into a pond and splashed out most of the water. Everything the poor giant saw looked bigger than he was. 
A butterfly scared him silly. A dragonfly looked big enough to drag him off. When a fuzzy caterpillar crawled toward him, the giant became so upset that he ran to the far end of the valley. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a scary-looking caterpillar. I think I would run, too. Oof. Just then, the cranky witch zoomed overhead, cackling. How do you like my little magic spell? She shrieked. Now perhaps you'll behave yourself and stop stomping around, shaking the ground and disturbing my supper. To the giant, the witch looked huge as she zipped around his head. Shaking with fright, he dashed out of his valley and around the far side of the hill to hide. It happened that a small village lay on the other side of the hill. A little boy from the village was walking down the road. When the giant saw the boy, he tripped over a farmer's barn and smashed it as flat as a dinner plate. Don't hurt me, he cried. You're bigger than I am. That's silly, said the boy. I'm only a little boy. You're a great big giant. I know, the giant sighed. But the witch on the hill has cast a spell on me, and now everything I see looks bigger than I am. I'm frightened by birds and worms and squirrels and butterflies and caterpillars, even little boys. I don't know what I'm going to do. The little boy sat down beside the giant and helped him think. After a while, he had an idea. Maybe you need glasses, he told the giant. If you wore glasses, you could see things again the way they really are. Why don't you come to the village with me and ask the eye doctor to help you? That idea pleased the giant very much. But as they walked along the road to town, a bee frightened him, and he accidentally kicked over a windmill. A cow scared him so badly that he accidentally squashed a hen house. And a puppy frightened him into knocking down several lines of clean clothes. I think you'd better wait here, the boy told him. I'll bring the glasses to you. All right, sighed the giant, but do hurry. He sat down beside the road and waited. Soon the boy returned carrying a huge pair of glasses. I hope they fit, he said. They were the biggest ones I could get. The giant placed the glasses on his nose and squinted through them. The boy looked tiny, the way a little boy should look to a huge giant. Birds looked no bigger than gnats. Trees looked no bigger than grass. The giant smiled, the giant smile. You're a good friend, he told the boy. Now, nah, let's take a little walk up that hill. The giant carried the boy with him up to the witch's creaky old house. She was not at all pleased to see them coming. Shoo, she shrieked. Go away, leave me alone. But the giant wasn't frightened any more. He picked up the witch's flying broom and snapped it between his fingers like a matchstick. With the scowl, he chased away all eleven cats. Then he let loose all the bats and spiders from the creaky old house. Finally, he snatched up the witch herself. Are you ready to behave yourself? He rumbled. Oh, all right, she snapped. You win. Put me down and I'll remove the spell. And she did. After that, the giant and the little boy often took long walks together up and down the valley. The giant's thundering footsteps still made the ground shake, and the cranky witch still sat in her creaky old house on the hill and muttered to herself. But when a bat plopped into her soup, she just helped it out. Never again did she try casting a spell on the little boy's giant friend. The End Okay, well, good night, everybody.